Welcome to Pollen Weather by Pollen Wise App. It's Wednesday, July 8th. I'm Landon Bunderson, and this is the place for allergy news and forecasts. As grass season winds down and weed season is ramping up, we're going to begin highlighting some common weed allergens, and we'll do that right after the forecast. The forecasted high pollen levels for today look a lot like yesterday. Central Texas and northern Wasatch Front, Utah, are going to be very high again. Northwestern California is going to be very high as well. Everywhere else is mostly high or moderate. Looking at the forecasted peak mold concentrations today, it's going to be eastern Utah and Michigan again, turning in the very high levels. Gulf Coast, you might have an all-clear for mold today, as will northern Alabama. Monterey, Mexico, your mold levels are creeping up, and by tomorrow, you might move into the very high category. Showers dot the east and midwest, but the big system is in eastern Montana, western North Dakota, and southern Saskatchewan. Look for possible severe weather in that system, and the only potential significant wind is on the front end of that storm. Same story again for air quality today, fires in the southwest and poor air in the Great Lakes region hoping for rain soon for both areas. Just going to leave you with a look at temperatures, some cool air in the northwest, but everywhere else is going to be quite hot. With weed season at the door for many of us, I want to talk about a particular group of weeds known as chenopods and amaranths. The chenopods and amaranths are two plant families that for the purpose of allergies are grouped together because we can't tell their pollen apart. From here on, for simplicity, I'm just going to call them chenopods. Some of the more common allergenic chenopods are water hemp, amaranth, pigweed, Russian thistle, lamb's quarters or goosefoot, and kochia. Here's pigweed. Here's a close-up of the pigweed flower still developing, and here's a mature pigweed flower. A lot of chenopod flowers look very similar to this. Note that the flowers are not showy. Rather, they're just green, hairy appendages at the end of a green branch. Here's kochia. Here's a close-up of kochia flowers, very small and yellow. I like to remind people as often as possible that most allergenic plants don't have showy flowers. If it has big petals on it, it's bright red or bright yellow and large, it's probably not producing a lot of pollen that becomes airborne. So if you see weeds that look similar to pigweed or kochia with green or very small yellow flowers, they might be chenopods. Feel free to send photos to info at pollenwise.com for help with identification, or you can try out a plant identification app. There are lots of good ones out there now. Chenopods are classic weeds. They like to invade disturbed soil, like plowed fields and construction sites or your garden. So be mindful of this when you're around those areas. One thing you should consider when gardening, beets, quinoa, and spinach are all in the quinopod group. Beets and spinach shouldn't be a concern for pollen because you usually harvest them before they flower. But since the edible part of quinoa is seeds, the plant will definitely produce pollen before harvest. These are just a few things you should know about quinopods as weed season approaches. It's always good to be able to identify the plants that you're allergic to. If you can avoid them when they are pollinating, you can reduce the amount of pollen you're exposed to. Thanks for listening. Download the PollenWise app and turn your alerts on. Also, remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more forecasts and useful allergy information.